part two, the yard. Hey, my camera battery went dead on me when I was down at the ram pump. That's the second time in a row that's happened. It's really weird. And it's also the second time in a row my e-cigarette battery died at the same time. Must be a ghost down there. Maybe it had something to do with those power lines that crossed the creek right there. Anyhow, what I wanted to tell you to continue this is that I am not opposed to PVC pipe for a delivery line. If you got them smoking, this is some stuff I had. I've got 400 feet of pipe left over from where I had my ram pump positioned differently a couple of years ago. So the only reason I'm using the uh, the garden hose in the creek as a delivery line is because the creek meanders such sharp turns back and forth, and uh, and it was cheap. You know, for me, less than thirty dollars per hundred foot. I don't even know what PVC pipe costs today, but this is three quarter inch PVC pipe. One good thing about it is that it'll go through a culvert pretty easy. This is that delivery line we were just looking at. Comes up here and goes underneath my road over to my reservoir. Now there's another line coming back this way. That's because I also have the ability to irrigate this big orchard over here. Even though my primary uh, mean, my primary uh, reason for having a ram pump is irrigating my turf. Uh, here we have uh, drip type lines. We have regular hoses that go out here. I have Y splitters all through there where we can uh, spray everything out in the field, all the berries, the grapes mulberries, anything else that's out there. All right, let's continue on with the round pump for the turf. Now this is an important comment about your reservoir. I don't know what those uh, big plastic totes cost, you know, the ones that hold 150, 200 gallons of water. They're sealed up. I know they're expensive, and I just bet you they're hard as heck to clean. If you've watched my videos over the years, you've seen me go from a 16-foot pool, 4-foot deep, to two pools, the easy setup pools that were, had an inflatable ring around the top. No, none of that works for me. The big pools are just too hard to keep clean. And the pools that have the inflatable ring around the top, don't last any time. I'm constantly out here patching them up because you get frogs and other creatures on your pool and then at night a cat comes over, puts his claws in the thing and it's deflated the next day. Or a snake comes up and tries to bite a, you know, a tree frog. But anyhow, that, they do not last. It's more trouble than it's worth. This is just a little Intex 8-foot pool and this thing holds about a little over 600 gallons of water. I can handle it by myself. All I have to do is irrigate my yard, get this thing pretty much empty. I've got a little sump pump I can get in there to, to get the last half inch out. And then I just flip it upside down, which takes care of all that silt that you see on the bottom there. It's been two months since I turned this pool over. The reason there's so much silt right now it's because I didn't do any uh, irrigation for about three weeks. We had so much rain. So this water just sat idle in here and that, I ended up with something like that. If the neighbors are complaining about your ugly pool, tell you a bottle of this Pond Champs Blue Lake and Pond Dye. I've had this five years and I bet I still got 80% of the jug left. All it takes is a little bit, about that much, and that will turn 600 gallons of water blue immediately. All I need to do is take a, uh, yeah, you probably need a net like this to scoop the leaves out and stuff, but all you have to do is just take your net and move this stuff around. And within just minutes, 
it would have turned this entire pool beautiful blue. You won't even see that silt on the bottom. So, you know, out of sight, out of mind. And this stuff does not hurt your grass. I've made videos about the ram pump and talked about the pool, but uh, a pool like this, you don't you don't need a filter. You know, a filter is just a waste of money and it's a lot of trouble because you know you're going to have dirty water coming in here. Just use it till you know it looks like you need to clean it, and then pump all your water out onto your yard and turn the thing upside down, spray it with your garden hose, and then let your ram pump refill it. This is a little over 600 gallons, and I get that much every day. I can come out here at lunchtime and pump this pool dry, and by daybreak the next morning it's, it's full again. I just let it run over. I got a culvert close by. It just drains right back into the culvert. Now, if you don't have a culvert or something, you may want to, you know, you, you may want to come up with some ideas for an overflow. Let's talk about biscuits. Mosquito biscuits. These are little discs that you can throw in your, your reservoir and it will help control mosquitoes. It contains a chemical that prevents mosquitoes from becoming adult insects. I mean, you know, a mosquito can come here and, and lay eggs in this water and those eggs could hatch out into larvae and even though I'm pumping the thing almost dry every day, I know that larva could survive because I've got minnows and tadpoles and everything else in my pool. So I know mosquito larva can, can uh, survive in this reservoir. So anyhow, these mosquito dunks, they last a long time, a couple of weeks or more. All you do is just throw one in. It'll float around in there. And then if the eggs hatch into larva, the larva will come up and feed on that. And then it's a uh, good night I ring. Again, I want to remind you, I'm talking about a three quarter inch ram pump for turf irrigation. And if all you're doing is looking for a, you know, a couple of hundred gallons of water to maybe drip irrigate some tomatoes or water your chickens or do very little stuff, then you probably don't need a transfer pump. But if you have a yard and you want to make sure you get an inch of water on it every week, you're going to need a transfer pump. Every time I make a video about this, I say I can't pronounce its name. I'll leave that up to you to figure out how to pronounce that. But this is a 1.6 horsepower pump. I bought it off of Amazon. I think I paid $80 for it or something, but that was years ago. But you can still get one, you know, one and a half horsepower, 1.6 horsepower for less than $100. And these things pump over 800 gallons an hour. That's a lot of water you can move. If you get a transfer pump, it may or may not come with a intake hose and foot valve. This is my second one. That's a foot valve right there. It has a little uh, intake filter on it. I normally have that attached to a brick to keep it down low. I think my brick fell off. But uh, if, if you have to buy your own hose and uh, foot valve and intake filter, the whole thing is less than 20 bucks, maybe 25 at today's prices. I would say if you're a typical homeowner and all you want to do is water your yard, all you need to do is come up here with a one inch NPT adapter to go to one inch, I mean to three quarter inch garden hose thread and put you one of those Y splitters on there or you can get one of those uh, four-way splitters 
at Lowe's or Home Depot for about 12 bucks. You screw that on there, then you can attach four garden hoses to this thing. And it's powerful enough that you could run four sprinklers at one time, depending on the type of sprinkler you're using. Now, I did want to mention that uh, for less than $100, you get a pump. You may or may not get the uh, intake hose and foot valve. But it is not going to come with a pressure switch or a pressure tank. And so that means that if you're going to, if you've got this thing running and you want to move your sprinkler and you don't want to get wet, you need to turn this pump off when you can walk over there and move that sprinkler. Or if you have Y splitters, and I mean, I'm sold on these things for everything. All you have to do is like uh, turn off the sprinkler that you want to move and turn on a different one. In other words, you, you want to have moving water in here every time this pump is turned on. If you try to run this pump where no water is coming out of it, I think you, you risk busting a seal on it or something. I've had this pump four or five years and I pump at least 12,000 gallons of water a month for at least six months out of a year. I probably pump 300,000 gallons of water through this pump, dirty water. I haven't had a minute's problem with it. I've made a separate video about the types of sprinklers. My favorite is one of those whirly gig sprinklers that just goes round and round, a cheap one. You know, I bought mine at Target, and back in the day they were less than four dollars a piece. Now they're probably ten or twelve dollars. But this time of year, it's fall, coming up on fall. I've just overseeded my yard. I want to get a large area watered, but not much water in that on top of my new seed. So I'm using one of these. Uh, I forgot what kind. What you call this kind of sprinkler? This particular one's made by Gilmore. I bought it at Lowe's. It covers a huge area, maybe four to six hundred square feet. I'd have to look at the package to really come up with the right numbers on that. But uh, it's an oscillating sprinkler. And what I like about the Gilmore, not only is it adjustable, you can adjust the fan spray which way it goes, but here it has a little blue cap on the end of the uh, on, on the end of the, the tube and you can unscrew that and flush things out just turn your pump on and let the water dirty water run through there I had to get rid of sand and whatever other junk might be, get caught up in there and if for some reason one of these little nipples gets blocked this cap also has like a little uh, probe on it that you can stick down into those holes to clean that out all that for less than 12 bucks Buy you a bunch of them. I'm running over 200 feet of extension cord from my single outlet at the back of my house by my deck all the way across the yard down to this pool. And where I have uh, extension cord connectors, I'll just take a piece of block like that, you know, something. Let me show you put it together and stick it under some kind of cover so that uh, it doesn't get flooded with water. I should have done that over here too, but I didn't. I'm using 10 gauge extension cord to go that far. And this cord could also be buried. Back when I had a swimming pool used for swimming, I had it buried. But now I just have it on top of the ground. Be sure to pick it up when you cut your grass though. The pump has an on off switch, a toggle switch. But sometimes I don't feel like walking one end of my yard over here to the pump. So I'll just step into the house, get another beer. And on my way out the back door, I have a breaker box there. I can turn this pool pump on and off at the breaker box, the breaker box. Uh, controls my outside circuit and the only thing I have hooked up to that receptacle right now is my pool pump. 
if I could give you just one tip today of what you need, it would be a clock like this. You can get them at Walmart, Family Dollar, just about anywhere. Just a regular old analog clock with a second hand on it. And you can see where I've added some numbers. At the 12 o'clock position, I have 15. At the 3 o'clock, 60. At the 6 o'clock position, 30. And at the 9 o'clock position, 20. What that means is that you count how many seconds it takes to fill up a 32-ounce cup. Not a 40-ounce cup. It has to be exactly a 32-ounce cup because we're trying to determine gallons per hour. So, in other words, if you start when the second hand is on 12, and it takes one minute, if it takes 60 seconds, to fill up that 32-ounce cup, you have achieved 15 gallons per hour. If it only takes 30 seconds to fill up the cup, you've achieved 30 gallons per hour. And if you have a super system uh, and it only takes 15 seconds to fill up a 32 ounce cup, you're getting 60 gallons an hour. Go ahead and take a mental picture of this clock with those numbers written on it. they would really be helpful. If you try and do that with an iPhone or something, listen, it's going to get weird on you. Because unless you understand that exponentials, you're better off just to copy this. Now again, this is for a three quarter inch pump. The reason I say is there's exponentials involved. You can see the difference between one minute and 45 seconds. It's only five gallons per minute. So you would think, okay, if I'm halfway in there, that's a, a difference of two and a half gallons. Well, it is right there. But if you look at the difference between a 30 second fill and a 45 second fill, it's 10 gallons per minute. And the difference between a 30 second fill and a 15 second fill is a full 30 gallons per hour. Uh, I said per minute, I meant per hour. So just make you one of these things. This is my trusty 32 ounce cup. It's got a split in the bottom, splits on the side. I've got duct tape all around it, but it's exactly 32 ounces. And what we're going to do right now is put this into action. I'll show you how it works. If you recall, when we were down at the creek, one of my ram pumps had two waste valves, two three-quarter inch waste valves. Today is the first day I've tried that. Uh, I have been using a single three-quarter inch and a half inch waste valve in combination on that pump. And I was getting close to 30 gallons per hour up here. Let's see what we're getting right now. We're looking for some between 25 and 30 gallons per hour. When it gets on the 12, we're going to go. Let's go. I'll tell you something I've learned is that uh, when you do your backyard testing on your ram pump, and you're using a 50-foot hose, I better pay attention. That's 15 seconds right there. That's 20 seconds. 25 seconds. That's 30 seconds. Getting close. 35. 37 seconds to fill that cup completely up. So, we can look at the clock. And it's somewhere between 20 and 30 gallons. I would guess that that was probably around 25, 27 gallons per hour, which is pretty good. Actually, that's about what I was getting with a uh, three-quarter inch uh, check valve and a half-inch check valve in combination. All right, well, we're, you know, we're still going to keep playing with everything. But what I was saying was that, hey, if you, if you do a field test on your thing with a short delivery line, say 50 feet, you might get 30 gallons per hour reading. But once you go 400, 450 feet of delivery line, especially if that line has been used for a year or two, there's going to be a lot of drag on that line. There's going to be a lot of junk inside of it that is 
putting a drag on that water. It's not going to flow as smooth as it did when it was on a short line or when the system was new. So maybe with one pump you might get 12 to 15 gallons per hour. That would be pretty good. I always try for at least 15 gallons per hour. And then put two together coming up the same delivery line. Uh, it's probably going to be about what we saw there, somewhere between 25 and 30 gallons per hour. I bet you didn't know I'm a former foot model for uh, Redneck Magazine. Hey, here's some boots I bought back when I was a commercial fisherman. I don't know what they cost. Probably an arm and a leg back in those days because they'd just charge it to us along with the food, the gloves, and everything else we bought when we uh, pushed off for a trip. But uh, anyhow, you, you can buy a pair of boots for like 30 bucks. And I think if you're going to be wading in a creek, unless you live up in the mountains somewhere, you, you don't know what's in that creek. The other day I went down there in my tennis shoes. Let me show you my socks. I was wearing tennis shoes the other day when I went down to the creek. I had not anticipated going into the creek, but I did. And it looks like somebody poured a whole darn box of starch in with it. I have not washed this yet. But if it makes your socks that stiff, there's probably something in the water that's not that healthy for bare feet. Get you some boots. You spend $30 for boots, or for about $33, you could buy some chest waders. I bought these off of Amazon about three or four years ago. I think they were $20-something dollars back then, but I checked this morning, and the current price was about $33. And... Uh, Man, these things are really good, especially if you're in water, you know, over knee deep. Or if you're in new water, you don't know what's in there. I believe snakes are attracted to uh, warm blood. Same thing for turtles, crabs, crawfish. You, you can put these on and feel safe. Or if you just have someone helping you do a project down at the creek, they'd probably appreciate having a pair like this. Uh, it comes with a belt. I don't use the belt. Uh, 33 bucks, good investment. I've had these several years. They don't have a leak in them. They don't leak, but brother, they don't breathe either. And if you're wearing chest waders in the summertime, I don't care if you're in a creek, you are going to sweat a lot. So, I would recommend wearing a pair of sweatpants. I bought these at Walmart for less than four bucks last spring. They had them on sale. It's 80% cotton, 20% something else. But if you wear sweatpants, uh, that means that as you sweat, they'll, it, the pants will absorb it, and you won't have a mess when you go to take off your chest waders. And as an afterthought, uh, if you've never put on chest waders before, a piece of advice, don't try to put them on like a pair of pajama bottoms. Do it like the firemen do. Push everything down below the top of the boot. And that way you just step into them like all you're doing is putting on the boots. Then you grab the straps and raise that up over your shoulders. Otherwise, you'd be swinging that heavy boot around <laughs> like a like a ninja with nunchucks. <clears throat> All right, I think that might wrap us up. These are not the kind of socks you would want to wear with with uh, rubber boots or chest waders. Those boots are, you, you want them a size bigger than your regular shoe. And if you're just wearing short socks, they're, by the time you get back home, those things are going to be down, rolled down around your toes. So if you're going to wear rubber boots or chest waders, get you some socks that are at least calf high, preferably knee high socks, kind of granddaddy wear. And then when you get home, you ain't going to have a big mess. We could talk about... Uh, testing ram pumps in your backyard and all that but I've already made a video on that and you would understand what these
tanks are. Uh, so that's going to wrap it up today. I hope maybe out of all my chit-chatting, an idea may have come into your head about, hey, you know, I've been thinking about that. We'll, we'll go ahead and, and try and improve on it. I'm not saying I have all the answers. What I pointed out today was, was issues I've had to deal with over the years uh, experiment with ram pumps. And hopefully one or two of those issues will, will be something you're familiar with and you could use it. If you want to uh, learn something from the expert, go on YouTube and search Seth Johnson's uh, page. His YouTube page is called Land to House, Land to House. I'll put that in the captions. I'm telling you, he's got dozens and dozens of videos about ram pumps. Uh, his viewers write in and ask him questions, and he'll make a short video about it. Yeah, he's got a degree in engineering. He's really smart about ram pumps. He's one of the vanguards of ram pumps in America. He's the guy I bought ram pumps from. He makes a good product. But uh, if you've used ram pumps for a while, I know you'll get the itch and you will want to start building your own. So anyhow, I hope you found this helpful, and I'm going to sign off of here. Thank you. Thank you for watching.